Hello everyone, it, uh, fish tubers out there and others who might be watching in later. Thank you so much for joining me today at uh, 411 Eastern Standard Time just to check out a few things. First I wanted to show off the uh, young fry here in the discus tank just to show you the progress that has been made in the last week. These fry are now about a quarter size and it looks like I'm going to have to move them. So they're just a little too big for their britches anymore. So I'm looking forward to um, trying something in a different tank. Get these fish uh, in their own grow out. The mom and dad are probably anxious to lay again. They're doing very well. That seems to be some 20 five to thirty of these hello everyone just to say hello to jonathan walker also to uh, ryan nonstop aquatics looks like we uh, have the some of the typical crew and some new ones too hello um Bosiwi and stubbs aquatics also thank you so much for being in the house what we're going to do today let me set up uh my stand. We're going to take a look in the uh, fish room on a few things. We're going to look at a few tanks. Specifically, we want to look at some breeding, ram breeding tanks. Um, that will be very helpful today. We do have a, a, an agenda for us. Let me see if I can turn this around. Hello, everyone. So glad to see everyone in the house. A little bright there on the behind. Always does that. So the camera's not not so not so much right in the face. Today's episode, if you're joining us, um, obviously it's a holiday for most. So for being um, a very busy day with family, I suspect that most people will be watching the replay. So if you'd be so kind as to please. Um, drop a little line in the uh, comment section below and be sure to say um, what the um, uh, uh, the replay crew is uh, live and kicking and that would be very helpful. At least we can see how many people are, are actually able to see and watch this uh, fourth episode live stream. This will be the last live stream of 2021. And uh, that's because uh, next Saturday it will be a new year. Hi, Malik. Aqua Malik is in the house. And we're glad to have him because next, next week I'm hoping to be able to do something. Uh, maybe a little more in tandem with Aqua Malik on the 1st of January. And on that day uh, we'll be starting out. And I would like to uh, make mention of uh, a lot of the future plans that we have for this fish room. We have one question so far. What RO system do you use, if I may ask? That's Ryan asking. Um, I use the RO Buddy. It's um, uh, only, it's good for 90 gallons per day, I believe, or close to 100. And, you know, honestly, I don't think I would ever use that much because I just use it so little, so I have it set up. Let me give you a shot of where it's at. In this tiny fish room, I have it set up so that it will, it will be there. Now you hardly see it over on the um, bench. Let me see if I can point it out. You see it sitting right here. That's the RO system. Now, when I want this RO system to work, all I have to do is turn the red knob, red knob on, and water begins to flow through my uh, tube. And I usually just fill some uh, containers with it so I can have a little bit of RO on hand. I don't, I don't use it um, um, immensely. I will use it for the discus fish when they are getting ready to lay eggs. I want the eggs to, to come out to be really uh, soft. Yesterday I did a lot of work in this section here. Uh, you'll notice that all these were changed. We'll look at the fry, what happened to all the fry. Uh, they got moved on to bigger uh, grow outs, but those... Uh, uh, looks like one looks like about six we have right right now six breeder boxes that are actually 
uh, being used right now on the uh, on the nursery section of the fish room. Okay. So, um, you're right. That's a big RO water system. But you know, uh, I'll tell you this much. If if you go out to price them and you go out to buy them, you'll find that you won't really be paying that much extra for the 100 gallon one. In other words, it's not that much more. My idea at the time was to get one that would be sufficient for my needs, not even knowing what my needs were. And since I didn't know what my needs were, that sort of put it on like, well, maybe I should just buy a little bit bigger because the canisters are, are maybe a little different, the membrane, but the cost of the canisters and replacing them and the filters, uh, that part of the RO water system is actually what costs. So if I bought something that was a little too big and I don't use it that much, the, they won't go as, they won't need to be replaced as often. And so that's what my thinking was. So it's not going to really cost me more to run a bigger system, even if I use it at a smaller quantity. Now, at least I have the option that if I were to get a larger facility, maybe I had some grow out space somewhere else and I needed some RO water for whatever reason, I might be able to just move that over and I would be able to use it there and buy a smaller one for this particular place. So that gives you an idea of, um, you know, why I went with that particular size. I think it was also on sale. Um, there was a good price going, and the the buddy system is is well known. So I didn't have any problem finding it. Oh, is Roman in the house? Welcome. Looks like uh, we have a good crew going on today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed. Um, uh, okay, Boxing Dale sales on tomorrow, so after Christmas sales or Boxing Day sales uh, will be going on. That would be the time to kind of look out for something like that, something that you might be interested in picking up. And we appreciate everybody showing up. Now, uh, I just want to give a little um, idea of what we're going to see today. I would like to point out some progress. We looked at the discus fish already. If you missed that, you joined us a few minutes late. Just go right ahead and when we're done here, uh, go back and replay because I'll be uploading immediately. And then you can replay and then look at the discus fish in the first few minutes. Uh, they've, they're really looking nice. So I want to see some progress of some of the fish I've shown you before. It'll be very brief and then we're going to get right into today's topic. And the topic today is breed, ram breeding setups. And I have several comments to make and, and, and Aqua Malik, I'm so glad you're here because to be frank, some of the things you've said in the past um, have raised, you know, at least an interest in what I'm doing. For example, um, uh, we're gonna look at how to put more than one pair in a single tank, in a small tank at that. Well. It's, it's not just straightforward as throwing fish in a tank. And uh, I'd like to point that out and explain it thoroughly because that way anyone who um, is curious about how to do that, um, yes, yes, of course, more moderators. I, um, can, can moderators make moderators? That's something I've always wondered. I'm kind of new at this, so I'm not sure. Um, how to do that. I do know that we've always had um, a, a number of people that come every week. Um, for example, let's see here. How do I do that? I don't even remember how to do it. Remind me how to do that, Malik. I have to do that. Okay, how do I do that? I have to go to people. Um, hmm. I'll figure it out. I did it once before, so it must be uh, possible. Okay. Let's see. Maybe it's something as simple as 
Let's see here. Click on the person. Oh yes, just click on the person briefly and remove your hand. Then add moderator, okay. All right. Let's see here, I've gotten boom. And Jonathan Walker, who I have his phone number. I always appreciate being able to, got a few more moder moderators and we can, and by, by the next time we'll have even more. So the first question is, uh, how are the fish doing? And uh, I did some work yesterday uh, cleaning up some of the tanks. I would like to just point out that, that this one in the back here, this one in particular has um, been cut back a little bit. I've removed a lot of the plants. It was just overgrown too much. But uh, the reason for that is because once in a while a fish will actually jump out of the breeder box and into the tank. Now the water is the same because the water filters over, flows through, so it's the same water. The fish don't suffer except if there was fish in there that ate small fish, of course they'd be goners. I'd also like to uh, mention because it's part of today's uh, um, program, you, you see that little basket hanging on the side of the aquarium? That's holding my little, what do you call it? These are the uh, pieces of foam rubber. These are the things I use. These are the weirs. But um, this little basket, it just uses a suction cup. Now, <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate how to use one inside a tank as a timeout box. And I have uh, an example. I don't know what I did with the sample. I had it right there. That's uh, part of a having a real, real fish room. Is that if I set something down in a different location, if it's anywhere else but where it should be, it will take a long time to find. But I'll just use this one today. We're going to show you how to use this. Uh, these come at the, from the dollar store. You pay about a dollar for these. And what they're designed to do is actually, you put them on the uh, side of anything, holds up the sponge you have in your sink. And then of course it just drains out. But I found that these, these ones are actually quite useful because uh, rams don't jump. They don't seem to ever, I've never seen one jump. Uh, apart from little ones, when they're frightened, they might jump out. Um, but adult rams, there's no reason for them to jump out of the water. So what I do is I will put it in the tank, and we can do that. Watch this. I'm going to put this in the tank, and voila, instant timeout box. This is one breeder setup, and this is a particular pair of rams that uh, have bred before a couple times. There is actually on this side and that side a small breeding plate. I use these uh, terracotta dishes, very simple and cheap. One there and one there, one in each corner. I try to put them in the corner because I do not want the fish at all to be laying on the glass because that would be hard to get out. I have done it before, siphoned out the eggs, but uh, it's not desirable. It's easier just to pick up the terracotta dish and put it into a hatching container. So, the, they're looking at it now, but if the male starts to chase her too much, she's going to start looking for a hideout. Watch this. Okay. Notice what I did. All I did was provide a hideout. She can jump into that little box and he won't find the entrance because he's going to be trying to chase her from the bottom. And if he should get in, she'll just zip out and then go back eventually a little later. But once he sees her through the bars, he realizes he can't get in. He's not smart enough to think, oh, you know, there must be another way in. <laughs> he just sees that he's limited. But I've also put the male inside there just to hold him for a day or two while the female recovers and in that case I will put it like this 
and raise it up so the top is at the top of the water level. Now, that's pretty easy to do and after a day of being in there, the fish just gets used to it and he just sits there and he doesn't have a lot of mo movement, but it's very temporary. So it's, it's not for any lasting um, time period, but it sort of um, cuts the aggression when necessary. So I've used that. I think it's um, a very handy, handy little tool and it's part of the uh, breeding arsenal. Let's take a look at any questions before we move on. Okay. You can't see what I was doing. We can't see. Why is that? Can you see me now? Can you see me waving? Anybody? Oh, I see why you can't see. Huh. Because... Okay, no problem. I'll just show you what I did. Okay, so what I did was I put the... Um, sorry about that. I didn't realize it was off camera. I should have thought about that. But what happens is this particular box, what I can do is I can just put it in here in the inside and then tilt it like that. That's what I was referring to on how the female can get inside and she just sits inside as though she's in a bunch of plants or something. She can, she can sort of uh, hide out in there and it's kind of dark in the sense that it's kind of you know you see through the lines but you it kind of breaks up the vision so that works pretty good and then when i need to put the male in the timeout box this pair i haven't had to do that they're very compatible but in the past i've had to do that and i just put it up to the water level and i can move this thing around it's really handy for a, a buck and a quarter at the dollar store it's a very useful little tool it's like a mini tank now i I know there are other things you could buy to, to do the same thing, breeder boxes and so forth. If you got those, fine. But this is just one little hack. It's, it's something that's a little bit smaller. Maybe you need something smaller. Uh, I found it to be very useful. And there's the two terracotta plates in the corner. One and then another one in the other corner. So I apologize that you couldn't see what I was doing. I'm still getting the hang of this uh, camera business. So... This is basically since uh, I was mentioning um, this is a shrimp tank so I have mostly all shrimp in here and I do have a few blue eye rainbows. Blue eye uh, rainbow fish there's some young ones in here I'm growing up as you can see they're very small and they stay small I don't see any issues of having them in here it's it's interesting because I will be as a commercial side point I will be putting a, um, I will be putting the video out on breeding the uh, blue eye rainbows and thread fin rainbows maybe later today at the latest tomorrow. So look, be on the lookout for that uh, video. It's going to be coming out soon. So since last week we've had some hatchings uh, down here. Uh, we've got some fry we've talked a lot about the fry rearing feeding the fry um, I would like to uh, mention just as an additive or add-on okay I'm here yeah <laughs> penalty box exactly Roman that's exactly what happens so uh, appreciate the feedback tell thanks thank you very much for letting me know that wasn't in the in the frame Whenever, I wish it was a, a better way to, to let me know or tell me about that, but uh, I guess it's not sure. Now, I got an, a message one day from somebody who was, who was actually telling me. Um, they were saying to me, 
You know, I don't use the paramecia. I, I just use um, tank water. You know, I, I thought about it and I said, you know, how come... Here's my paramecia. Uh, wh why am I using paramecia? Maybe you can get some infusoria from tank water. When I look through this, I see a cloud of paramecia. It's, it's so thick, the water looks white. So what I did was, um, to test the hypothesis, I said, well, maybe there's paramecia everywhere. Let me experiment. So I took the red berries, the red um, hard berries, which are wheat berries, and I did the same boiling. I put it in a container, same container, but instead of using fresh, clean water, I used tank water. And I took the tank water and used that as my basis or my seeding the solution. I also, of course, used my two, um, I have little scoops, I buy the 1 32nd size, and I use two scoops of this, of the, brute, uh, the, the bread yeast, and that goes into the solution, of course, it makes the solution white, you know, when you shake it up, the bread yeast goes into the water with the cooked berries, and it's in the water. So I said, let's, let's see. I'm giving it the same culture media, the media, the food. And you, shall we say the brewer's yeast acting upon um, allowing for bacteria to grow and to decompose the berries. And then with, we have the infusoria that should just shine on such media, right? Such food. So I took one of my containers and here it is and I said let's use tank water so I did I took tank water and this has been sitting there for three days it looks clear it always clears up after three days from white milkiness to um, the paramecia and it took, and took a good look at it, and I said, I didn't see anything. Here's the same paramecia three days after I'm using it. This one is also three days. Okay. Very clearly seen. Paramecia is everywhere. It's clouds. It's forming. Not quite peaked yet. I can use this in another ten days. And I said, what's the difference? And then I looked a little closer. And I looked super close on the tank water. There is no paramecia. But there is a lot of very, very small creatures. Infusoria. And I remember looking at these it's a cloud. It's, there, there's a tremendous amount here, and it's, it's not quite white like the paramecia get because I realized these are so microscopic, so tiny, and it's now multiplying in great numbers that this could be used very easily for feeding fry, small fry, in fact. But the difference... Let's, let's talk about one or the other. Let's see. I'd like to see your comments about that. However, I'd like to make a, uh, uh, a, a supposition first. I'd like to suppose uh, the difference between them. One is, with the very small infusoria, first of all, I don't know what kind of animals they are. I don't know that they're paramecia. They're not, in fact, because if they were, if there was any paramecia in there, I would see them because they're so much larger than the other one. So they're very small. 
I don't know, and it's going to be a nice test, and maybe next week I'm going to give you the results of the test because that will be another seven days. That will be perfect ten days. And next week what I can do is uh, look at the results of this media being used. I don't know if the paramecia is actually too big for the little fish. I would say not. Maybe, well, they say bettas, you know, produce very small fry, super small. Um, this particular tank culture might be good for that. It might be good to use them both. But if my eyes can detect and see both of them, I know they're there. But what I'm looking at is, am I not trying to fill their stomachs? And am I, if I give them a paramecia culture that's very thick or highly concentrated and I put it in the water, would that not be a good feeding? Canadian Aquatics. I just squeeze a sponge into tank water until one, one day full of small... Well, that's true. The other question is, is there any small creatures that are harmful in high numbers? That I don't know the answer to because I've not tested it out. However, it would seem to me that using... I use this paramecia because it came from a laboratory. It's a very sterile type of concentration. It came from a laboratory and um, uh, I got it through Greg Sage. Don't forget uh, Greg Sage from Select Aquatics is um, uh, where he sourced these from a college, I believe it was a university or college um, laboratory kind of environment and they were using this particular paramecia for their experiments so they would have something that was pretty much well defined. Paramecia are also infusoria, but they're also small, but not as small as others. And so what I really like uh, about this experiment is it gave me uh, something else to work with. And now I see that um, I'm going to use both of them. I have seen and watched, I don't know how many different videos all over the internet I, I remember Mark's Aquatics when I was uh, enjoying uh, a couple years back. I was watching all his videos. Tremendous breeder. Makes it look so easy. He does the broccoli chopped up and he does the vegetation and, and he puts it by the window because the smell is so bad. And I've tried it and the smell is horrendous. Rotting vegetables is, is not good. Well, by just putting a few seeds in the bottom of these cultures, I'm using a culture media that I can do this. First of all, it has holes. And so the smell. Can't smell a thing. I can't smell a thing. Why? Um, the rotting is controlled. And the putrefication of the water well controlled and so for some reason using these particular red berry seeds seems to be the best. Now Paramecia same thing 20 days or this one is uh, actually now uh, three or four days old nothing absolutely nothing smells bad here's one that's uh, a month old can't smell anything. I don't think it's my nose either. I think uh, it is definitely the biggest improvement that has ever occurred in being able to culture these. And I can do this in these one and a half liter bottles, and whether it's from tank water or, or actual my paramecia strain. Um, I like to make these paramecia available to others. I think Jonathan and Jonathan, both on this, on, on today, they have both uh, received some paramecia from me and I think it's great to be able to uh, share with others. Oh, Sandy, thank you Sandy for mentioning the, the hay. That too is uh, uh, something. When I got the um, paramecia initially, do you know what I was initially told was they use corn husks 
So I used to buy the uh, unshucked corn, and then I used the corn husks, and that started rotting, but there was an odor. There was a putrid odor from the corn husks. It did produce the paramecia, but I wasn't too um, keen, and my wife was even less keen on, on what was happening there. So I, I go with the berries every time, and I don't mind cooking them up uh, every 10 days. It's just such a simple... 15 minute uh, ordeal every 10 days and uh, I always have plenty that on hand and I can share them with other people too so I do mail them I mail it all over the United States and all over um, Canada and I even put a little paramecia culture outside in the winter time just to see how long they would last in the cold and it looked like they were unaffected they may have just went into some sort of stasis or something. I don't know. As long as the water didn't freeze solid, I think that the paramecia got through it fine. So I was like, hmm, I can ship these in the wintertime. No problem. <laughs> it's a really great feature. Uh, of course, provided it isn't, doesn't get so cold that it just freezes into an ice, 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 um, icicle. So I hope that uh, clarifies something. I got that comment about the tank water. I learned something. It's really great. Uh, Theodore Brayman, welcome. Uh, Theodore, how many days do you feed paramecium to ram fry before switching to the BBS? Okay. Paramecia go in as soon as they become free swimming. Not usually before because they're on yolk sacs. Free swimming, paramecia goes in as much as I can without polluting the water. Do water changes if you're in a breeder box. Um, I use the um, uh, water change system in the breeder box. I, I siphon out, siphon in instead of the uh, flow through until the fish get a little older. But um, I continue with the paramecia until I see that they're eating the vinegar eels and then the baby brine. So I continue to keep feeding the, the the infusoria. So if a fish, maybe the first one will eat a, uh, I don't wait for the first fish to eat a baby brine shrimp and then it gets its stomach full but the rest aren't eating it yet. It's kind of grown at a little maybe accelerated rate. It's, you know, it, you always see that in every tank of fry. There's always going to be some of those slightly bigger than others. And I don't just stop feeding it because there's some younger ones that need to catch up. So it, it may be a couple days. So the answer to your question um, is basically about three days. Uh, a good three days I'm feeding the infusoria just to be on the safe side. Um, then by then, uh, by day four, they're eating baby brine shrimp. And as soon as I see all of the babies with orange bellies, I stop feeding the infusoria. There's no need for it. So. I wanted to diverge just a little bit on that feeding, on feeding the fry for that moment to uh, share that with you. Uh, there, is, uh, there is some eggs that are supposed to hatch today. Uh, let me just take a quick look, see if they're hatching right now. These are supposed to do to hatch today, I think. Oh, they are hatching. Okay, I lost you for a second. It was my internet. Uh, sorry about that. This looks like we've got some hatching going on. And I set my I set my flashlight down. There we go. Looks like they're hatching now. So what I do is I put the eggs at the top. I often put them at the top and watch. You notice that there's there's no fungus, just a few white eggs. And they're all hatching today. In fact, this is the first time I've noticed them hatching. And I, I'm glad they're hatching for you guys. So, um, I won't feed these for another three days. I'll start them in an infusory after that. The pH here is the pH of my water. My tap water is 8.1. 8, 8, 8 pH, believe it or not. That's... All my all my fish are breeding in 8.1. All my rams. I don't um, use anything else now. To move on, so that we can see some breeder setups. I want to get to that because I don't want to miss it. On the top row here, I have 
four gallon tanks. The reason I have four gallon tanks is only because four gallon tanks is all that fits there. Give you a, a size, there's not much space uh, between the ceiling and these row of tanks. But these tanks all have somewhat in common. Uh, there's a pair in them. I do like to use some gravel. Um, a lot of guys these have bare bottom. I don't think that it's necessary to have bare bottom. They, they are a micro geophagus species. They love to, they really do love to um, sift through the sand. It's just their habit. This pair will be laying again soon. Uh, in the back, behind that rock, they've laid on the rock sometimes. I have a uh, plate. So whether they lay on the rock or lay on the plate, I can grab the eggs from there. I've also started using a lot of hornwort, and I'll tell you why. The hornwort acts as a blind and also allows the female to find a hiding spot whenever she's being chased too much. And if I'm not around to watch it and to save her, um, it works great. Hornwort is very finicky. I can move it from tank to tank, it will die out. But if I, once I get it established, it grows so fast. Uh, I, threw a, I threw a bucket load of, of uh, plants away yesterday just because it was uh, too much. But it's great, as you can see. Uh, this pair has been breeding uh, regularly and they're doing very well. They, they all come up to the front of the glass because they see me. Um, look at this male here. I just love the way his rays are. Very long and pointed. Although not all of mine have uh, long and pointy rays. Um, this one in particular, that's the female right there. This pair uh, just produced not too many days ago. In fact, uh, that was, yeah, this is the, the pair that we just watched the hatching of the eggs. Their, their eggs just hatched. But you can see normally right after they lay eggs, the female gets chased around. But she's still looking good and it's because i've got a lot of plants in there for her these are floating plants so they're at the top and now a special treat here is in the tank next to us oh great looks like interesting it looks like the pair in the back are actually laying eggs today i don't know if you can see that i'm trying to zoom in it's not of light let me double check my eyeballs. Looks like there might be eggs on that plate. A little hard for me to tell for sure, but we'll take a look at it. Now, how is it that in a four gallon tank, you can have two pair? There's a pair in the front and a pair in the back. Okay. The, the pH is just tap water. It's, it's warm up here. The, I keep the heaters, uh, and the breeding pair is just about 82, 80 to 82. Um, the grow out sections are even a lot lower. Uh, I don't like them too high. But you can see the, the pair in the front is the list on the left. The pair on the right is already bred one, two, three, four times in the last two months. They're doing very well. Now, how do you do this? Well, to be honest, there is... Um, I haven't got the hornwort really growing in here yet. I haven't been able to do that. I've got an algae problem. It's like a string algae that started taking over in some tanks. I'm trying to combat that. But what you do is you go through your young fish, you pull out six young fish from the same batch. You pick out your six best. And then what you do is you put three pair the six fish in one tank together okay you have a big filter right in the middle middle and uh, it acts as a, a blind as well big rock or, but I use the filter because it's there and as the first pair pairs off a second pair will pair off and then I remove the other two extras so out of three pair, I'm going to only get two pair in this tank. And they're going to live happily because they've been together since the day one. Never add another fish. If I were to add one more fish to this tank, sorry, Charlie, there's no more space, no real estate left for anybody. 
So for that reason, it's pretty much set. So two pair in this tank because I didn't have any other tank space. And then there's a pair of electric blues over here. Um, I'm trying to get to um, uh, breed together, but they're just by themselves. So this is one example of having more than one pair. I'm gonna show you one more example. Um, I did the same thing. I put six young fish down in this tank. Okay. This is where my L134s are. There's also uh, cardinal tetras here. This pair is pretty much the main pair. This pair is the dominant pair. They've laid many times. This is pair number four. And then this one, another male, right there, another pair right next to them, they're living side by side. One, one pair lives on the left of the tank and the other pair lives on the right side of the tank. Now, the only way to do that is to put all of them in together and as they pair off, two pairs then pull out the third and fourth fish. And that's all you have to do. Once in a while, there could be a problem and one pair either goes out of condition and gets beat up uh, sometimes I have to do something about that. Okay, Malik, there you go. There's uh, my L134 male. He's, he's just there in the cave waiting for his girl. I don't know if um, uh, I'm ever going to get any uh, babies this year. I did last year, but I don't know about this year. It doesn't seem like they're interested. But I need to work with them a little bit more. So I hope this uh, also was helpful. However, there's one thing missing here, as you can see. It's a 20 gallon long. And so what's missing, of course, is the divider in the middle. Now, for a while, I was using, I was using uh, another tank over here and uh, down below, it doesn't have any rams in it right now. Uh, I'm, I'm just grow, using it for grow out space for pistos. Take a look at this one. This tank has a big plastic plant. Okay. In addition to a big plastic plant, it has a filter over the back filter going on. And you can see that it causes water to flow kind of strongly down the center and it divides the tank into two pieces so I used to have uh, I did the same thing here and I had two pair in this uh, I've since sold them but there's there was a pair on the left and a pair on the right and they would sometimes go through the plastic plant to go fight the other guys and chase them off but um, don't do that anymore I don't need to, uh, I don't have them in here, so. The plastic plant stays though. It's just a nice way to break up that flow from the over, over the back filter. And I use this tank mostly for uh, uh, growing out. I think there's some very interesting fish. There's the red lizards. They're, they're really growing, looking super nice in this tank. And it's because every time I feed these fish, Every time I put baby brine shrimp in with these babies, these fry, some of the baby brine goes through the weir and into the tank. So just as often as I'm feeding the fry, I'm feeding the big tank as well. And so the fish in there are really doing well. They're getting, I don't know, sometimes five, six times a day, they're getting a little dose of uh, baby brine. I also throw some grindle worms and also some uh, other other foods. So I hope um, that was very helpful to see the setups and how they how they work. 
Um, I didn't show you the other side. Up at the top on the left side are a couple more tanks with, um, here's one for example, oh it looks like, out, when I see a male hanging out over the dish, it makes me wonder if there's anything in there. If he sees me, he might come running over. They think they're going to get fed or something. I don't know if there's eggs in there or not. Let me see. Boy, if it was, it would be... Oh. It's cleared. Usually they clear the rocks. Do you see eggs in there? I don't. But it's still a little grainy because when they're first laid, they look clear. So the clear eggs could be there. I'm just going to have to get my flashlight out. Let me see if I can... I'll check back later. It looks like uh, they may have even just started. It's possible that they're spawning now. So, um, and lastly, this little tank here is just holding some extra females. Uh, when when I see a female like the one in the back there get dark, and uh, she's ready to go, that one right back there, I don't know if you see her, she's, she's ready to go. So what I'll often do sometimes is pull out the female that just laid eggs, she needs a rest, swap her out for one of these that's just dying to go. Looks like both of those are. From the looks, yep, they're picking at, looks like they want to lay eggs in the corner. So I may have to uh, try to grab them before they lay eggs because there will be nothing if there's any eggs laid in this tank. But um, that's what happens. Here's a uh, quick shot of my Epistogramma Borelii opal. A beautiful fish. I've got extra males. Um, I do need to find homes for extra males. I've got, uh, they, they, they spawned and I've got so many males now I don't know what to do with them all. Females look completely different. They, they're yellow and they got the bar through the, through the eye. But the males are just outstanding. Okay, well, here we are at the top of our um top of the steps let me go down and uh see if there's any questions so far i may have hit some questions and didn't see them let's see what do you use to block the weirs on your reader boxes good question jonathan um that is an excellent question i'm going to show you what i use and uh i get I buy uh, intake sponge filters, and I get them very cheap. Oh, I'm trying to zoom out. Let's see. I need to change it around. There we go. So I get, I'll show you what I got here. I bought this. This is from uh, Amazon, very cheap, super cheap, 10 bucks. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you get these. Now, the quality is different, and you can't tell by looking at the ad on Amazon or eBay. I bought them from eBay as well at one point. These are made to go on the intake of your over the back sponge, uh, over the back filters as a sponge intake. And there's a hole on one side, and there's nothing sealed on the other side. So what I do is, the size works out just perfect. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors, and I'm going to take this, and I don't know if you can see, I want to make sure you can see this time. Yeah, you can. Okay, so here, I just go like this, and I see what size I want, and I go like this. And I got now a disc of this stuff 
some of them are come in a little bit more coarse and some of them come in much finer and I've gotten some that has material that's super fine very very dense and in the same package I've gotten some that are thick and some that are not not as much so they're different so I don't know how to find the right one I, I guess basically try them out for for what little money they are it's no big deal I wet them make sure they're going good and they fit right here and I keep one right there even if I'm going to be changing the water out and not using that I keep it here because I have been known to be distracted by something in the fish room and then next thing you know I'm overflowing and this will overflow into the sink but uh, at least this will prevent any babies from overflowing with the water that goes over but when I hear the water flowing over here I know immediately that oh I gotta stop but I use also a timer I demonstrated last week with this uh, water that drains into and fills up the the um, breeder boxes so once they go from here over to here you can see these ones are not actually being over flowing into the tank yet because the fry are too small and if we push them through they'll get caught in the weir it's not it's not ready for them yet but once they start growing just to the point where they're full body they're eating baby brine shrimp that's time to start the flow and it, it will start flowing and I'll remove this um, um, little little bit of um, air bubbles. The bubbles just break up the tension on the surface and make sure that there's not an issue with uh, film or anything developing on there and, it, that, and really just to slowly circulate the water just a little bit. So that's what the purpose of that is. See if there's any more questions. Everybody's asking very good questions. Thank you Steve Sutton for joining us today and also S and we have um, probably some more. If I missed you, I'm sorry, Theodore. We did answer your question. Okay. So that answers um, the questions and it also kind of picks up on the various uh, breeder setups that I use. Uh, not much, much more complicated. The water is not complicated. It's just tap water. I just use the regular tap water and I, I use this system here behind me and you can see a um, 25 gallon you see up there the 25 gallon at the top with the little marks on it that's just fresh water uh, it's filled by turning a knob and I fill it up from the tap and then I hold it there's a 300 watt heater in it and it's going to bring it up to 80 degrees and there's also a huge uh, you can see right in here there's a huge amount of bubbles that's been aerated and that gets rid of any chlorine that might be there so after eight hours you know it's really ready to go so fresh clean water is then um, drained out we're, we're going to be talking about management system in the future water management and then this is my um, drain so this is full of water it siphons out from that top tank and all I need to do is um, Set this in, in a tank, turn that blue knob, and it refills. And I also have a motor at the end, other end of this. It's a pump, motor and pump that uh, will speed up the process if I want to go out even faster. So I can do straight. I also have one of these. It just fits on the end. It's like a, a little contraption, so it kind of disperses the water in some tanks. And um, thank you, Keith Henshaw, for your subscription. I appreciate it very much. And that will uh, bring me to the big subject. We're, we're just about at 1,000 subscriptions. And I want to thank everybody who is a subscriber. And uh, thank you so much for joining this year. It's been an interesting experience. And uh, we're going to enter 2022 with uh, a lot of great... Um, um, subjects and, and discussions. They might be subjects and discussions that are very detailed and maybe specific to a certain aspect, but um, oh really? Keith? 
have we reached 1,000? How do I tell? Does anybody know? When I looked earlier today, we were uh, very close. We were only less than 20 subscribers short of 1,000. As a uh, surprise, um, next week, on the first day of the year, I'm going to um, do a, a giveaway. I'm going to give away a actual sample or culture starter of paramecia, microworms, and vinegar eels. Three, three cultures, and I will mail it out to um, the winner um, next week. So it'll be next uh, Saturday on the first of the year to celebrate a thousand subscribers to the person who um, um, joins us next week and uh, we'll figure out how to, to give it out. Uh, I know there's a way. I just have to learn what that way is. I'm still learning along the way. And that will be um, a, a tremendous feat and I'm just very happy to have so many join. I don't do this for um, financial gain and it's not my goal to um, make money via YouTube it just isn't but it's my goal to share what knowledge I have and my experiences and I want to be able to do that for everybody okay Jonathan says we're at 996 very close it's only four more four more and we hit a thousand so that's why I said next week because I believe next Saturday there will be no question I should be up at 1,000 subscribers and um, especially in view of the fact that I'm releasing a new video um, tonight or tomorrow and that will be a very interesting one showing how to breed blue eye rainbow fish and um, dreadfin rainbows etc it's, it's some it's it's been a video that I've had in the works for a year and a half and I've just for some reason never could get it out the door and now I finally decided to, it's time to just let that one go <laughs> so we're gonna let it go and uh, see if it can be a benefit to people who are interested in those fish and uh, they're very small fish and if, if as you can just imagine uh, paramecia are a big part of it so infusoria is, is almost necessary Okay, Keith, thank you. Um, uh, 999, that's interesting. I don't, I doubt if, uh, I don't know exactly how often or, or how long it takes for the numbers to actually pick up. And I don't think it's instantaneous. It, it, I think there is some lag, but um, thank you very much. I can't thank everyone enough for being with me these last four weeks. It's been quite a ride. And to conclude, uh, today we're hitting our hour mark, so I have one minute to wrap it up. And I just wanted to say thank you for all these things. Um, uh, just to show you a little bit of, um, before I go, the, the rams as they are now. We're going to start over here. Here is uh, a tank with uh, rams in it. These rams are still on the grow. Uh, the rams that I took out of the breeder boxes from last week are here. I've got German blue rams here. German blue rams here. And we've got electric blue rams here. So it looks like we got a nice supply of electric blues as well. So that's what I'll be using. Going up to the uh, almost for sale side, these fish are now um, uh, starting to show color. Um, German blue rams. There's a few in there that are just grown tremendously. But here's the next batch for sale. And you can see the colored ones. I'm going to pull these out tonight or tomorrow. And uh, put them in a separate tank for themselves ready to, to sell. So you have some colored up ones uh, already uh, hitting the deck. So this is a good several hundred in here. I'm going to just pull out 150. Jonathan asks, how many weeks old do you put the flow through the breeder box? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's probably only about a week and a half, 
they're eating, they're growing, I would say a, a week. You know, you know, Jonathan, uh, here's the question. I'm going to show you over here. And uh, here I'm not doing it on these. I'll, I'll show you. You see how they're swimming at the top? They're swimming and resting, swimming and resting, swimming and resting. Th these, these fish are not strong enough to combat. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I, I, I buzzed out for a second. I think my internet, every time I get close to that, that rack over here, it, it happens. So these are not really ready. These ones um, in that box. However, once they get to this point, look at the difference. They're schooling, they're flowing, they're bigger. There's no fear in this case. So once they start doing something like this in midwater, and they're not at the bottom resting, they're not at the top resting along the top, that's when I do it. So how many days that is probably depends on um, uh, the fish because electric blues or even black rams I would imagine be the same they're gonna take a little longer they're gonna take a little longer to grow they're slower growing and so you might want to wait a little longer than you would if I gave you a number for like the German blues so if that hopefully answers your question uh, gives you an idea you have to do it by sight you have to look at the f at the fish and be sure you can figure that out it's been really great to have you all with us um, today and I want to thank all the uh, individuals who are joining us each and every week uh, there was one more thing I was going to mention that is coming up in the future I've got a it's like an unboxing uh, if you notice here I've got a brand new Milwaukee portable meter and I bought this um, thanks to the German Blue Rams it done so well for me it's the MW802 so I haven't opened it up yet uh, it's still in the packaging and I'm anxious to see how it goes and I'm going to open it up and and hopefully um, share with you my my thoughts on this particular product it is a multimeter electronic not a cheap one uh, I have been using the one that Malik uses. Um, he put me on this, and this is a pH meter, but this is a pH meter, also a a conductivity meter. So now that I have the um, discus going, I wanted to have something I could measure conductivity as well, and uh, I also wanted something that works a little faster. Uh, this, for me, I don't know why, it takes at least five minutes for the um, pH to stabilize and I know Malik uh, has always you know used it much faster I don't know how how that is because in my case I always watch it and it keeps changing and it keeps changing it doesn't stop changing until it reaches about five minutes so uh, I'm not going to be standing there five minutes I want to I want to be able to measure it in, in a decent amount of time I mean 15 seconds is one thing but five minutes I don't know so this is exciting for me. I'm anxious to give this a, a, a try and we'll be uh, playing around with it uh, in, the, in the weeks to come. So that's to give you some idea of what's yet ahead. And oh, there it is. This is what I wanted to show you. I couldn't find it earlier. I hung it up in a, in a not so obvious place. The dollar store. My timeout box, $1.25. And it's for scrubbies, but um, I think it's uh, a useful tool for a number of things. If, if for anything, just to hold my little sponges, keep them all together, organized, and that helps a lot. I didn't show my uh, Cynodonis today. I, I, since last Saturday, I got another big spawn. So I, I have uh, Cynodonis coming out of my ears right now. Uh, these, are the Petri uh, these are not Petricola, these are the uh, Lucipinus and boy they're basically almost the same i uh, i'll uh, be showing those uh, in a future video thank you all so much for your thumbs up thank you so much for joining today i do appreciate if you're part of the replay crew please leave that note and um, just wanted to say thank you three swirls and read <laughs> We'll see if that's how it works with my new device.
And um, I appreciate the comments and you all joining me today. And uh, I, I, I can't thank everyone enough. So it was great to see um, you and I'll be watching your videos and keep them coming. I'll, I enjoyed the, the Aqua Malik with uh, Nick the other day going back and forth on issues. And so it's always something nice to see. They're both uh, doing very well these days. And I, I do appreciate those videos even more so because I think I relate a lot to um, Nick in the way I think a lot of us do because when I was young I felt the same way he did and, and the only difference is he's living the dream and so he's able to do something and my, my life took a little different course and I had to stop with the fish for some time and now I picked it up again but um, after years have gone by but I had a different um, um, career uh, I work as an electrical engineer uh, power distribution and lighting that's my uh, actual occupation so well that uh, is exciting to, to hear and see Nick and all his um, videos he puts them out very well he's he's young and knows all the technical stuff he can uh, do all the things I have trouble with today I'm sorry for for when I fail short here and there but uh, thank you all it's uh, been a nice uh, live stream and I thank you so much for dropping in, and I will see you next time. So goodbye, fish tubers and fish fam everywhere, and keep on fishing. Doesn't sound right, does it? Keep on, um, keep the hard work in uh, in your fish tank rooms. Yes, this is. Uh, fish room four one one signing off for another week.